Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to an emergency session of GNN. As uh, you guys may have been waking up to or been up late like I am. At, not at the time of this recording, of course, but late playing a certain managing democracy game. We have a brand new developer newsletter for Gundam Battle Operation 2, as well as a trailer, which is no surprise at all, in a way. But we have a new four-star suit coming out the end of the month. It's that time of the month already, which is no pun intended. But I've taken so many retakes of this so far because I'm always juiced. It, it, it leaves me speechless. I cannot get my words straight because this is something that we've probably been expecting since the iteration of the Psycho Zaku Mark II from Gundam Thunderbolt. Technically, Bandit Flower, to be more exact. So, without further ado, let's check out the trailer before we get into the newsletter. The perfect Gundam, as depicted here. As I said, these trailers always make me juiced. I cannot stress this enough. With them redoing things like this, this is always how it should be. Exciting. It should light a fire in your heart <laughs> for this. Like, I've seen the manga iterations, but to actually see it now depicted in GBO2 as a playable type of suit, super good. All right, so it's got the Xeon boot up process, the mono eye boot up sound effect instead of the typical Federation stuff. Of course, they would have space, so it could beam rifle, single saber. All right. Okay, okay. A little slow on the downswing there, but, you know, we can make it work, right? Seems like it's a fast, uh, stun build on that. Twin Sabers, okay. Psycho Zaku swings. A bazooka. And a spray gun. Okay, that's a normal tackle counter, I think. Defensive shot seems like it's pretty good. That might actually be pretty good. Quick turn, what? And then a special counter, as expected with the four star? Oh man. I am super excited. Four star, 9 p.m. Pacific, and it's a 550 four star. The first of its kind. The first of its kind. Four star, well, general, sorry. <laughs> I'm, that's how excited I am. I'm slurring my words. I'm getting the categories wrong. It's a general. Man, this is going to be nuts. All right, so we're going into the thick of things as far as what we can kind of depict. So based what I've seen so far with the beam rifle, the primary weapon that's going to be utilizing, it's going to be using a version of the grandpa beam rifle. Um, it looks like this is a stun, straight off, straight up stun. No charging. Just aim and shoot. Um, the single saber is one of those things that has a nice, it has a noticeable wind up. So it's really hard to say, like, you know, to lead in with that. It might be super powerful, hard to say without the stats or anything else to kind of back that up. But in terms of gameplay practicality, that might be a problem. But we'll see. It might be just, you know, well, just for demonstration purposes, not an actual combat like we're all used to if anybody's put in the time um but that dual saber swings that it has feels like it's going to be a lot more nicer to use or lead in with that having the extra stun with the bazooka is nice as well i gotta rewind this though because it has a dps option um especially while you're waiting for things to cool down or reloading now of course this is a well, i wish i could slow this down a little bit more but Looks like it's a five shot burst with the spray gun. So like there's a probably a good chance that you'll probably miss, but I almost want to say that's very similar to. Um, I think it's one of the gear dogas. If you charge fire, it's beam rifle. It's a it's a burst fire type of thing. Same with the gear Zulu um, STG beam rifle that that utilizes. So this will be nice to kind of like switch between your Vulcans and that if you're not able to close in or again re 
realizing that you're reloading or it's overheating, that sort of deal. But yeah, it does seem like the twin saber route is going to be the way you want to lean, uh, lean into or lead in with. But at the same time, it might be fast enough, you know, that you could fa fathom doing a downswing with a single saber. It is a chopping method. If we go back to this frame here, about what is it? I think it's like a 45 in. Yeah, right here. 45. So neutral comes out quick, but it's a downswing that's going to be a problem. It almost seems very similar to the Tristan downswing or the neutral swing where it's just like one handed. But it's a significant time in wind up. So. Yeah, sorry, 40, 45 there. So the new, yeah, neutral's fine. But that downswing, that downswing's going to be an issue. But, um,. No, I cannot wait to see this in action to get this. Maybe, maybe if, if, uh, I don't know. I'm probably going to have to grind out tokens like crazy because it's just like I haven't been saving up like I should. But part of it is the fact that I want to check these out. Suits like this definitely for sure feel really nice. I don't know if it's early to say that it's meta, but it is looking pretty strong. The only thing I'm not 100% sure on is because of the special skill that it gets for dealing with stun buildup. Stuns from cumulative stunning uh, items, or not items, but like, let's go to the actual definition really quick. But like, they basically explain that um, no fly stagger due to cumulative damage and reaction. So basically, uh, machine guns, beam guns, anything that has stun build. So I'm afraid that this potentially may not get MA or maneuver armor. Kind of weird, especially since it's a four star, but we've had three stars um, before that didn't come with uh, maneuver armor. Uh, the recent seventh Gundam did not come with it. Um, same with the Gira Doga Kai did not have maneuver armor, at least. Yeah, so it's just. I don't know. We'll see once the suit drops this Wednesday night, 9 p.m. But uh, on to the developer newsletter. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are with a note from Ishii from the dev team. Basically, enjoy <laughs> saying hopefully <laughs> thanking us for reading up on this stuff. Um, talking about how February is almost over and just kind of shocked how time passes on so quickly. Can't wait for spring basically for the most part. And so there's a major update coming in the coming weeks that's coming to GBO2. As we mentioned earlier in our news segment, the Thunderbolt uh, version of the Perfect Gundam based off the Psycho Zaku Mark II frame or the combination of the full armored Gundam from Thunderbolt and the Psycho Zaku Mark II are put together, hence making it look like Grandpa, or the almost, some would say, superior version of the Grandpa. Shout out to Spider Chieftain out there. I know he's probably going out of his mind seeing this. Um, but basically, yes, built on the frame of the Psycho Zaku Mark II, manufactured by a faction known as the South Seas Alliance after the One Year War, frame was retrofitted with al armor salvaged from the remains of the full armor Gundam. It says another Gundam, but based on... What I've seen, it's based on the rem remnants of the full armored Gundam from the first iteration of Daryl and God, I'm forgetting the man's name already, but the pilot of the original pilot for the full armored Gundam in Thunderbolt, um, them squaring off. So that's why it looks the way it looks. Uh, quick with the highly versatile armaments such as beam rifle, beam saber, and head Vulcan cannons. It also has a variety of ranged weapons, such as the bazooka and beam spray gun, which uh, in the manga, from what I've seen, it originally had a spray gun or a beam rifle that was based on the spray gun for deceptive purposes. Um, by utilizing the defensive shot skill, which is effective with when the main, uh, main ranged weapon is selected, the main weapon can be used to fire while reducing the area of the main body that is hit by bullets, allowing the unit to maintain the frontline raid and uh, take other actions to its advantage. Can be deployed on ground and space. It would be kind of absurd for this to be a space only or ground, especially with the 
I would say potential popularity of this suit. Um, I would say 500, 550 is kind of like my mainstay. I'm very curious to see how this is going to stack up. I want to fight this with my Hazels just because that, for the longest time right now, still sits at as a two-star. Although the skill set that it fits into its uh, properties there, it is literally a subsequent three-star. And honestly, I won't. I don't know if they can even do that type of change, but it would be nice. It would be kind of funny, actually, to see that happen, but I don't know. We'll see. We've already checked out the trailer, but also, in addition to the four-star coming, we are getting an old GBO1 map called Ravine. I'm guessing this is supposed to uh, represent the Grand Canyon that you've seen in multiple Gundam games before. Um... You know, Journey to Jaburo, the Gundam Federation versus Zeon, almost said Gundam versus. I don't know if they even have that map, but definitely Federation versus Zeon, even Zeta versus Gundam versus Zeta Gundam as an example. Uh, you name it, it's it's pretty much coming. And they kind of give you a general layout of how that map is going to be designed. It's very linear, I would say a Similar to Mountain, similar to, um, yeah, I would say Mountain's probably the closest thing to this because, sure, you could probably think about it like Impact Site, but like this is very linear, meaning if you control that midpoint, um, actually, yeah, I would say probably this is very similar to Impact as well, but there's a lot more, um, height advantages areas there that you can see as we scroll down. Um, definitely a lot of height advantage areas for like support type units, snipers, anything that has range that can even midline and depending on where the, the fighting is happening on the map, very decent advantages for that type of usage. Also, there's plenty of areas of cover on top of that, but it's pretty easy to kind of lock things down. They do have, actually when I'm thinking about this, it almost seems like a MOBA with this because you have different routes here, which it's kind of cool, but I don't know. Um, we'll, we'll see how this is implemented in actual practical, practi practicality as I'm struggling because I'm just like so excited to see this. Um, you know, more maps, more modes, more obviously more suits is always a nice thing, but uh, man, it's just it's kind of crazy. I don't know how deep that water is because the next update they're talking about is now action near or in the water. So. Sorry, I'm fighting allergies here. I apologize. Uh, but before, uh, basically, if you, your suit did not have... Well, let's go... Uh, I'm skipping ahead really quick. But basically, uh, the topic right now is all mobile suits movements are related in, in or near have been adjusted. Uh, basically, to summarize, mobile suits without the compatibility for water near or in will no longer be affected. With suits that have water compatibility will be buffed or applied with even a stronger effect. Meaning they um, then there will no longer have the falling speed effect due, due to the water. Basically, it won't be like gliding. So they're trying, I guess they're trying to essentially speed up the combat a little bit. Because if you're running in water, you're considerably slowed down. And especially when you have, uh, not port base, but military base. Where it's the big giant port. And it's completely in water and say you're not lucky to have a aquatic suit or maybe you just don't feel like running an aquatic suit. That's all changing. As of Wednesday's update. So before, yeah, you ran a little bit slower. It's safe to say that you might be down like say five, five speed on whatever walking speed that you're looking at. So say a suit that's able to run 130 is cut down to 125 or maybe even 120 depending on you know, whatever that figure is. With that change now, it is not affected. So, in a way, I guess you could say it's kind of more in line with how you see a lot of mobile suits in anime um, running through water, in, in a way. Like, granted, they should have enough mass to kind of, like, push the water out of the way and not feel like they're slowed down. So, that's cool. That'll be interesting. Because, you know, it's it's... It is kind of a pain, like, even, like, barely even skimming, like, the zone that you're in water, like, say, on City Ruins, you get that, that speed debuff, and it's like, eh. 
So now jumping into the water buffs. So for suits that without compatibility, thrust of consumption while jumping and high speed movement is reduced. So you do get benefits while you're underwater. Um, as far as jumping out or high speed movement, it's you have reduced effects as far as like the consumption or heat buildup in that regard as they kind of look at it. Recovery speed is faster when you're in water. So it's almost like a battle tech reference in a way. Um, yeah, recovery speed with beam weapons overheating is faster also in water. So that's really cool. But yeah, without it, you used to run. So now running speed's a bit faster for those that with the um, water compatibility. Same with speed with high speed movement. So we'll say a good figure of speech might be like, say, yeah, they go up another five. Because a lot of the uh, iterations of movement speed for parts as or even skills that matter they go in increments of five and tens and so forth so probably safe to say that you know if they're talking about it being a bit faster you know it might be around five would be fine so like say something that runs at 135 with water compatibility might be actually running with 140 so that's pretty crazy even with high speed movement as well same with turning speed so turning speed is going to be different now of course the falling speed in the water is slower so i guess it might have been faster now it's slower or Wait a minute. No, no. I am reading this right. So this was before. So there's a, yeah, so I am misreading this. So with the changes now, rust consumption is reduced. With the people, with the suits, sorry, that have water compatibility, it's reduced even further than that. And it's still faster, no changes. So they're only changing the thruster consumption while jumping in high speed movement for, for those that have water compatibility. It's still, it's still um, the same figure, whatever that figure is, currently is for right now for water for suits that are not water compatible. No changes for non compatible suits, but yeah, it's going to be even faster for suits that have aquatic ability. So I guess maybe trying to put more emphasis on people playing uh, aquatic suits. So I wonder if that also applies to like a cat pool, even though lore wise cat pool is aquatic it's just sometimes it's treated not that way so yeah basically nine o'clock p.m pacific standard time is when the new suit's gonna drop the new updates regarding this so i believe this is gonna be 177 when this releases because we're on version 176 so it'll be 177 and so but when on top of that the spring festival 2024 is on its way and they'll make a proper announcement in the update for now um they want us to be patient and uh, we'll have fun with the uh, with the update. So that'll be it for the emergency session. Hopefully you guys found this informative through my banter and excitement. Um, it looks like it's going to be a very promising and exciting GBO2 update so far, especially with the new 550 iteration. I know a lot of people are like, oh, this is going to be meta. I'm like, well, it's 550. It's not necessarily a 700 suit, but we will see how that fares in the the mess, the saturated mess, I should say, that is 550 because the last few suits that we got uh, tail end, on the tail end of 2023 have been around that cost range. So I'm very excited to see what it brings to the table here. But with that said, that'll be it for now. I wish you guys well, and I will see you guys all on the next video. Take care.